If you try what I show you in this video, make sure your microwave is unplugged before you start. 29 year old GE microwave that died yesterday. It died just as I hit the start button. It tripped the breaker. And when I reset the breaker, the microwave still did not have power. So you can see the little testers lit up at the end. So this extension cord has power. But when I plug the microwave in, the LED display where the clock and the timer are does not light up. I'm hoping it's just a blown fuse. If that's the case, that'll be a cheap and easy fix. To get to the fuse, I have to take this back cover off my microwave and you'll have to do that as well. Shouldn't be too difficult if it's a tabletop model like this. If it's one that mounts underneath your cabinets, it might be a little more difficult because you're gonna have to take it down first. Let me show you one thing before I take this off, one thing you need to look out for. Under the back cover of your microwave, there's gonna be a capacitor, a high voltage capacitor. It may look similar to this. You need to find that capacitor first and make sure you don't accidentally touch the terminals at the end because you could get a lethal shock even if your microwave is unplugged. I see the capacitor right away, it's down here. That's where those red wires lead and my fuse is right here on top. Here's a better view of the capacitor just to give you an idea of what it looks like. And again, do not touch the terminals at the end where the wires connect. Do not touch them unless the capacitor has been discharged. So here's my fuse and it is a ceramic fuse. So to test this, I'm gonna have to use a multimeter. To get the fuse out, I'm gonna have to pull up on it. I'm gonna use a paper clip that I modified. I bent a hook down at the end using needle nose pliers. Put that underneath the fuse and pull straight up and it should pop out. Now to test the fuse, I have my multimeter set to continuity, which means, as I understand it, one of these leads is sending out a little bit of voltage. So when we touch the two leads together, watch the display, we'll get a little bit of a reading, 0 0.01. Now when I place one lead on each end of the fuse, if the wire that's within the ceramic coating, if that's intact, then it'll be just like touching the leads together. We should see 0 0.01. If we see nothing, that means that wire is broken and the fuse is blown and we see nothing, which means no wire connection. This is a blown fuse. Now, what's the amperage rating on the fuse? I don't think you're gonna be able to see this. You might, stamped in the metal, 15A. So this is a 15 amp fuse. Back from Home Depot, it's only about a mile away and they had what I needed in stock, 15 amp microwave fuse. So let's test that new fuse next to the old fuse. Same way we did before. We're not gonna get any reading on the bad fuse. On the good fuse, we should see 0 0.01, and we do. This is a good fuse, let's get it installed. Put the new fuse in, plug it in, and we should see a display, should see a reading, which we do, that's a good sign. Now I have a damp paper towel. Gonna heat that up for, let's say 20 seconds. And when I hit start, if the fuse blows right away, I have another issue that's causing the fuse to blow. So hopefully it will run. From what I've read, fuses can fail due to age. I hope that was the case with this one because it is 29 years old. This is the original fuse for this microwave because I've owned this microwave since it was new back in 93. No issues with it until yesterday when the fuse blew. So this should be hot, and it is. You can see the steam, very hot. So hopefully the age of the fuse is what caused it to blow. And I just noticed one thing that I did not see earlier. I don't know how I missed this. Technical data. Here's the warning about the high voltage capacitor. Use extreme caution to prevent electrical shock. And also a wiring diagram, 15 amp fuse, which we saw stamped in the metal at the end of the fuse. You may have something like this on yours. I don't know. I don't know if that's required for them to do. So if your microwave dies, don't automatically just throw it in the trash and buy a new one. It might be a cheap and easy fix. It might just be your fuse. And be careful around the capacitor. I'll say that one more time. You can really hurt yourself if you touch the terminals before this is discharged. So be careful around that. A couple of links below. I'll put a link to the fuses that I use and the multimeter. This is a cheap one from Harbor Freight. Probably costs about six bucks. That's it. Hope this helps you out. Thanks for watching.